Hello and welcome back to my craft room. I've got an exciting uh, new project to share today, something that's been in the pipeline for a little while. If you joined us for the um, Saturday Night in 2K special last night, you'll have had a sneaky peek. So I, this is for all the slow stitchers out there. Um, I've been putting some little kits together and I'd like to introduce you to the slow stitchers whatnot. Now Tom thinks that's a hilarious name. I think it's a really good name. <laughs> I can't think of a better one. So let me tell you, let me tell you where this came from. So it all the whole idea was sparked by this little this little doodad here. Which I think I have to say is the best needle threader I've ever used. For embroidery needles, it won't work on really tiny tiny eye needles with normal thread but if you're doing slow stitching and embroidery and things it's brilliant i'm going to take you to the desk now to show you uh what my thought process is so this this is the little uh needle threader it's fantastic but it's i actually find it really difficult to pick up and i end up having to go like this to pick it up so i started thinking i'm going to put there's a little hole in it i'm going to put a little cord through this and that's where this idea was was born really and this to cut a long story short is what i came up with <laughs> two very different examples of of this idea um so the idea is that uh, you've got this little heart shape which you can use as a pincushion it's got lots of slow stitching on and you could do an awful lot more slow stitching on it than this. I've put these samples together quite quickly to be ready for this. It's got this little ribbon loop here with a book ring through it. You can attach that to your scissors. So you get your little nifty pair of scissors. You've got a plaited cord here with the needle threader on. If you were doing something like if you were making the little needle cases that Tori's been showing on, on her Cool Kooky Creatures channel, you could actually put an extra loop on that and, and to put that on, on the ring as well and have the whole lot all linked together ready to throw in your bag and take away with you. So um, I think this is going to be a really, really handy little thing. It's really, it looks really cute, it's really useful and it was so much fun to work on. So what I thought I would do is I'd put a few kits together with... Um, um, pieces of fabric that that um, I've got in my stash. Um, I've done all different kinds. I'll show you them in a minute. This was um, this was the first one I did. I only had one other kit with this because I didn't have much of this particular trim, which I love, and it was the one that Jackie chose. So Jackie Jackie Perry, who you'll know as Fabulous Jacks if you're in the Discord, a Jackie Perry on in the in the Facebook group. Um, she actually chose this particular kit. There are lots of there are lots of others as well. <laughs> I can't put together exactly this one again because as I say I only had a very limited amount of this little trim. So I've done all kinds of, all kinds and um just for completely something completely contrasting, I did this little, little superheroes one. So <laughs> I just love these fabrics. I've got a, a fat quarter bundle of these fabrics. And what I've done is I'm um, I've slow stitched into them. So I've I've added trims on. Like you can see I've you can see I've couched down a piece of thick kind of cord here. And, and there where there were stars in the fabric I've done little straight stitches into the stars no complicated stitch in here at all a bit of blanket stitch on the edge there um, kind of an over over stitch there I've done fly stitch feather stitch y stitch whatever it's called there between the between the strips and um, and actually in here it might not be obvious there we go so you can see I've covered the um, the background of that blue piece in the middle is all covered with little seed stitches um, so it's all it's actually really quite tactile and then on the back I've done some just running stitches just straight stitches around the pattern that was already in the background of the fabric so it was all very easy going I made each of these easily in an evening um, but you could do a lot more work on it if you wanted to with this one there's that kind of fly stitch or whatever it is again I've blanket stitched this piece of trim down I've done some just straight stitching I love a bit of straight stitching there's quite a lot of that on this one here I've done a straight stitch but I've whipped it with another another length of the thread to thicken it thicken the line up I've done a, a kind of a lazy daisy around the the, the little flowers that are printed in the fabric here I've worked some little cross stitches into the squares I've worked a little cross stitch into the the squares um, printed into the fabric 
and you know I could have gone on I could have done more um there's this fabric at the back now I could definitely have stitched into this for sure but I just I just wanted to put these samples together quickly enough to, to have them ready uh, for today for the for, so I could put these in the Etsy shop so let's have a look at some of the other packs that I've got there's this one now I need to give these names really <laughs> But I can't decide what the names are going to be. They might have names on, on the Etsy shop. <laughs> I might manage to think of that by, by tomorrow. So, um, yeah, that was quite a, a bright, cheerful one. Sort of tropical colours. This one's much more much more subdue, subdued and uh, subtle. But I still I love it. I love the combination of the that kind of soft tealy kind of blue and the pinks. And the sort of natural colour there. Little pop of green. Um... There's the superhero one. Here's another more kind of floral one. Floral prints with white and uh, pink and, and pops of green again. This one's more on the blue side. It's got little little pops of um, pink, green and yellow, but there's a, it's, it's a lot of blue there. The tropical one again that's that one again have i shown you all the oh and this one that's the other colorway it's sort of lavender and uh green colors i love that one i think that's probably one of my favorites i've always loved that combination of green and purples like that in each kit what i put is one there's one piece of plain fabric, a larger piece of plain fabric which will become the base there's a piece of patterned fabric which will be the back and then there's a whole selection of, you can't see it too well in that one, see it better there, a whole selection of, of strips of different patterned fabrics that end up forming the sort of stripes of pattern across the heart. Um, there's more than you need there, there's, there's plenty to choose from, you'll have some leftovers. Then there's a few different trims that you can add, you probably again won't use them all. There's also um, pins and there's going to be a needle I'm just waiting for my Amazon delivery <laughs> and then the needle will be added you could then actually cut the felt you could use the felt you could cut out shapes you know perhaps cut out a heart shape or an initial or something to add to the to add to the heart if you wanted to um, there's the there's three lengths of this cotton cord here which you plait together to form this this piece that the needle sweater is is hanging from there are in each one there are two of these um, thread holders like that um, with plenty of thread on there and in, in different colors to coordinate with the with the fabrics um, of course there's the book rim ring and the needle threader um, there's a shorter little piece of ribbon there that's what creates that little loop that the book rim goes through and then there's this um, little package here, this little folded paper a package here, which has got beads and sequins, that kind of thing in there to add on if you want to. I haven't actually added any on these. I, I just put them together too quickly, really. And then obviously the, the packing as well and a heart shaped template for you to cut out and the instructions will all be. So everything you need to make this will be in there. So you, you could give it as a gift. I put a link to this tu this tutorial that I'm going to do now will be linked on the bottom of the instruction sheet. So if you gave it as a gift uh, to a friend or whatever, they, they would know they would be able to follow the tutorial. Because it's quite hard to explain things just in written down words sometimes. It's easier just to watch somebody doing it. So, um, so what I'm going to do now is put one of these together myself. I'll do it in quite a simple way, but perhaps suggest some more elaborate things you could do if you, you know, if you want to spend the time doing it. I really, really hope that people are going to enjoy doing this as, as, mu as much as I did, and like the colours that I've put together. I could put, I've got plenty more. I could, I could make a, a lot more of these up. I just thought I'd do a sort of a selection of, you know, different kinds of colourways. See, see what what people like. What, which colours people like the best and if they like the idea at all <laughs> and then I could always make up some more if if, um, if I need to. Let's put these out of the way. Right so here's all my stuff all unpacked and ready to go. There's my needle threader, my book ring, here's my um, 
thread holders I haven't bothered to wind them on on all beautifully for myself and it, and it is really nice to have these little things actually so if you're taking a little stitching project away with you you can take away just what you need or even if it's not taken away if it's just taking them downstairs to work on in the evening or I will tend to wind what I want to use onto these kind of things it's just nice to have it all contained there's my little beads and stuff which will be in a nice little paper package in your kit there's my needle I have got some of these clips as well because I quite like using the old kooky clips <laughs> um, so I might use them instead of the pins but I have got my pins handy you'll get just a couple of pins in your kit just it's enough just to just to manage you don't you know you could probably manage without them all together but they're quite helpful um, here's, here's my trims here's my little pieces of fabric a couple of mine are a little bit on the small side like this one um yours will yours will be and this one yours will be in kind of longer strips but um i just used what i had left because i thought i can i can manage <laughs> but yours will all be in longer strips to give you to give you enough scope then in each kit there's a plain fabric and then there's a pattern fabric to use on the back this is my template which i've already cut out and i've actually cut a, a smaller heart shape out of the center was because i was playing with some other ideas but i'm not going to do that tonight and then there, there's my stuffing and here's my cord that I'm going to plait together to make to make this bit so this is all it's fine I, I won't I won't be able to use all of there isn't room on this heart to make all of these there's probably enough to do a second one if you found a, a, another couple of pieces for the for the for the base uh, to be honest there, there's quite a lot there or you could perhaps just make another just Make some make some of cookies um kilt pins or needle cases and use the little scraps up on that. These little these little fabrics would be perfect for that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna use a pencil now and draw around this. Perhaps I'll do it on the wrong side. Not that it's gonna hugely show anyway. So I'm just I'm just gonna draw around. You could use a heat erasable pen or something if you want to, but to be honest, this isn't gonna show anyway, so it doesn't matter. I've already cut this one out. There we go, that's that piece cut out, so I'm going to put that to one side for later. Keep these pieces, don't throw them away. You can do one of uh, one of Tori's projects on cool kooky creatures, or um, you could use it for some scrappy string squares. I like that uh, scrappy string quilt project that I've been doing. Um, yeah, I wouldn't throw pieces this size away, I would keep them. So let's put that to one side out of harm's way. And then the next section, this is the bit that really is easier to show you than to try and put in written instructions. It was quite hard to find a way to write it down. So first of all, I'm just going to decide what order I want everything to go in. I'm just going to roughly lay them out in the order I think I might like. Sometimes if you if you get some bits, I don't think I put any that short, but if you get some shorter bits, you'll need to make sure those are on one of the kind of outer edges. So I need to bear that in mind. Okay, I quite like that. I put that to one side to use for something else. And I'm just going to put these to one side in the order I want to use them in. So the idea is we're going to work from one side of the heart across and we're going to cover it with rectangular with rectangular we're going to cover it with diagonally placed strips of fabric so i'm going to use this one first because i've only got a small piece of this so it needs to go on <laughs> one end or the other and i'm going to place this first one will go face up and i'm going to make sure that i place it so that the edges so it covers the edges of the heart it overlaps the edges of the heart I'm having to fiddle a little bit because this is a really short piece your pieces will be longer but I can see that if you, if you turn it over I can see that it's amply covered that I'm not doing any stitching now I'm not bothering to do any pinning this is all really easy and then this next piece I'm going to put face down so I'm going to put these right sides together I'm going to line up these this raw edge with this raw edge and I'm going to place this so that it overlaps the edge of the heart. Um, I don't want to put it like that because I, I'll have a gap. I'm going to put it like that. I'm, I probably, being, being, being a skinflint, I'm not going to put it like that and end up wasting a little piece on each end. I'm going to put it like this. <laughs> so that I can cut my bigger piece off this end. Mm, but I like that pink, so let's put it that way around. 
So there we go. And and this is where you could um, you could pin if you want to. Um, but to be honest, you could probably get away without pinning at all. And then I'm going to take my first um, piece of thread. Now, this part of the stitching isn't really going to show. So um, if it's a colour of thread you don't like so much, use that here because you're not really going to see it anyway. And um, for this part of the stitching, I, for most of the embroidery I'll use two strands, but for this part of the stitching I can just use one strand. Make the thread go further. So here we go, I've got my one strand. And now I can show you how this needle threader works. <laughs> so this is where you see I'm, I'm having problems picking it up. So if it's on a cord like this, it's just really easy to pick up. <laughs> That's where the whole idea came from. So the idea is that rather than try, hang on, rather than try and get my thread through the eye of this needle, I'm going to push this through the eye of the needle instead. So um, you can see that this is quite a large eye needle, but it's not the largest. Um, so I'm not going to use the, the largest end won't go through, but you've got two ends. So I'm going to use this one. And let's hope that the camera will let me show you this. So instead of trying to get the thread through the eye of the needle, which is really tricky, I'm just going to push this through the eye of the needle, which is really, really easy. I just put that through like that. And then I can get the um, the end of the thread. Just put that around that hook. Easy peasy. And pull it back through. Look at that. I mean, it's such a godsend. <laughs> That's a game changer, that is. OK, I'll probably just do myself a little knot. Use the old quilt as knot trick. <laughs> Lovely knot. And then I'm just going to stitch. Oh, it's not crucial. I'm going to give myself about a quarter of an inch or, you know, well, a bit more than a bit more than half a centimetre um, seam allowance. It's not crucial. But I will try to stay straight. Now I've started there, I will I will follow that line along. You don't need to do a back stitch, it doesn't need to be strong. I'm just going to do a quick running stitch. I will make it reasonably small and neat. You don't want great big kind of basting stitches, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be a back stitch, you don't need to do that. So this is kind of this this bit is kind of like um foundation. They call it foundation piecing. It's so quick. <laughs> it's so unfussy. Uh, OK, so that's it. I've done that in real time. I don't even need to speed that up for you because it's so fast. I'm just going to do a little double stitch at the end to secure it. Cut the thread. Take my pin out. And now I'm going to turn this second piece of fabric back over and I'm going to flatten that seam down and finger press it. So now you've got no raw edges showing there. And this is what you can do with those with these scrappy string quilt squares that I've been doing. If you don't want all those scrappy raw edges that I love in that, you can do exactly the same method with this as well. That's kind of what we're doing, but in a heart shape, really, at this point. Now, this is a bit tricky where this shape starts to happen. This is my next piece of fabric I want to use. So now I'm going to place this fabric like this. Now, I don't want to line it up. If I line it up, well, I want to line it up along. I want to line these edges up. But if I line that edge up as well, if I do it like that, that looks fine. But when you turn it over, it's not, it's not going to cover this. I need it to be all the way up there. So I'm going to put it like that. So both edges of the heart are covered. I've lined up this raw edge with this raw edge. And I'm going to put my pin there. And I'm going to start stitching here. 
So it goes up to the edge of the, of the circle of the heart. I hope this is all making sense. If anything doesn't make sense, just shout me in the comments and I'll try and explain myself a bit better. <laughs> or even the Discord or the Facebook page, shout me on there. This is just so easy and relaxing. And I'm hoping that, like me, uh, there will be people out there who <laughs> will enjoy just using a little kit that's been kind of curated for you. You might be like me and have a whole hoard <laughs> of fabric already, but there's something really lovely about having having a kit all put together, all the colours picked out by someone, so you can just take that little kit and create with it. Tori's got some new um, a kit set as well. She's got these little uh, kilt pin kits she's done they're really cute so i managed to snag one of those as soon as they went on sale and yeah again it's a case of yes i've got lots of fabrics already but it's just it's love i love the way cookie puts them together tori puts them together she doesn't mind which you call her <laughs> okay that's that one done take my pin out fold that back press it right back ah now look See, I've done, a, I've done a stupid there. I should have joined that further up. But what I'm going to do is leave it like that and put a little bit of trim there, I think. So I could plan for this trim to go there and that will cover it. Or be this one. Or... Oh, I quite like that. Yeah, and because um, also, but once you um, put these two together eventually, most of that little gap there is just going to be lost in that um, in that seam anyway. So perhaps I won't even worry about that. Um, so next one is this one. Again, putting it down so that these raw edges line up. And when I turn this over, see now if you want to avoid making the mistake I just made, you could pin it here now. You've got a couple of pins in your kit. <laughs> We've probably all got pins, but you know. If you give it to a friend who hasn't started slow stitching yet, they might not have pins, so I thought I'll put everything in. Um, you could do that and then just turn it back just to make sure it is going to fit. And you can see that that is. If you don't want these so wide, like maybe I don't want as much of that yellow um, maybe that's too much. I could decide why well, I'm going to go up here a bit. Let's do that. And just make it a narrower strip of the yellow. Just a little zing of the yellow. But I've got a bit near the edge there, but I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so there, I've, I've made that yellow strip a little bit narrower. And now I could, if I wanted, if I had a bit more left over there, it might be worth just trimming this off because I could use that for something else. But I'm not going to... I'm not going to bother. Now I'm going to turn that down because I want to fit in a couple of my trims as well. <laughs> if you're anything like me, it's like, I want to use everything. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't think I'm really going to have room to use all of this unless I squeeze it up a bit. So let's put, let's imagine that's going to go like that. Right. So I've come, look, I've not come to the end of the strip, but I've come to the end of, of the heart on the back. So I've got all of this overlapping stuff. I'm not going to worry about that for now. We'll come to that in a minute. So this time, because I've, I've ended up with a lot more, once I fold this over, I've ended up with a lot more of that pink there that I don't need. So this time it's worth me just trimming it off. I've folded that back so I don't accidentally cut through my base fabric. <laughs> there we go. So that's worth getting. I'll definitely use that for a scrappy string square or, or something else. Now I still want a bit of green and they're really I'm running out of space, look. <laughs> I haven't got room. Um so yeah, I think I'm gonna have to uh admit defeat there. I don't think I can fit any more on that little uh, on that little heart. So the next step now is to um i'm going to turn this over to do this bit and now i'm just going to run a kind of a 
I suppose it's kind of a basting stitch really but I'm going to keep it quite small and neat because the stitches might end up showing. If you don't want them to show you could definitely unpick them afterwards but um, I like all my stitches showing even my kind of working stitches, my background stitches like that. So now I'm going to stitch just quite close to the edge of the um, of the heart. Um, I'll probably end up sewing my two hearts together about a quarter of an inch or just over half a centimetre. Um, so I'm going to keep just inside that so these stitches probably won't show but if they do I'm not going to worry about it. And uh, this, these stitches aren't going to take any stress. You don't, again, you don't need a back stitch or anything because they're just, they're just kind of keeping the layers together for the time being. So I'm not going to do a huge, great tacking stitch, but I'm not going to do a tiny back stitch either. So I think just these little small, neat running stitches will be fine. Oh, I've unthreaded my needle. Lucky I've got a needle threader. Okay, so I'm just going to the end of that now. I <laughs> think my stitches got bigger towards the end. Really doesn't matter. They are not going to show. Quick little double stitch to finish off. Um, so now I've I've um, anchored all those all those pieces down. I can cut around the outline. And again, I will save all but the tiniest of pieces. So I would use those in my scrappy string squares. Um, really tiny bits like this will go in my little orts jar that I'll keep for scrappy, scrappy, scrappy quilts. Also watched um, Christina of uh, Creating Craft with Christine. She did this. She did it for our um, Inspired by Collab. Actually, she did this amazing kind of like a. It was like a fabric mosaic, really. This kind of collaged, stitched, collaged snail shell that she did to create this little character it was amazing i'll try and remember to leave leave a link to her and tori called kooky creatures so there we go that's my basic shape done um so now i've got this piece left over and this piece left over and these pieces so yeah so there's plenty there i could definitely use those um, on other things and then I've still got these as well so I'll probably think oh, a bit of pink up there might be nice I do like this one I think that's really pretty I feel like I want a bit of green down here where did that bit of green go there it is so I'm just wondering about yeah I think that would be nice and then I need something here and I don't really I don't necessarily want to put trim over all of the joins because I quite like doing this thing where you you just have a stitch a fancy stitch between the joins like that and I love that particular stitch I also love blanket stitch um, you could also if you wanted to not do it all in strips you could do it a bit like Tori's been doing with her kilt pins and things and just um, patch little pieces on like this cut them all in cut all the strips into tiny pieces patch them together like that and then stitch between the joins you could you know you can use the pieces however you like um, but I want to just demonstrate this one kind of as intended and then I might do another one later where I sort of patch it together more just to give you some ideas um, <laughs> see, this is one. I'm falling into the trap of wanting to use everything and I just don't, I don't think there's, there isn't scope to use everything here. This is a little bit of bias binding. I love it. So I've been hoarding this for ages. Some of the kits have got, um, let's have a look, see if I can find one. Like this one. They've got thick kind of fibres, yarns in like this, which I've used to couch down. Yeah, so I've just couched them down like that. Um, which I really like. I haven't got any of that in this particular kit. But it's all different. You can just attach these trims just by running a, a running stitch along them. Um, um, here I've just run a, a running stitch along to attach it down and then I've whipped the running stitch. And with this one I've used a blanket stitch to attach the trim. Um, this one is just a running stitch along there. Oh. Uh, I haven't actually used any of the trims on this one. I just did it without, you know. Um, but you could carry on stitching into it and adding trims until you can barely see the, the fabric underneath if that's what you want to do. Um, or just make it all about the stitching. Oh, look, there's this one as well. I forgot this one. 
So if you're making like Tories kilt pins or little needle cases or scrappy squares like I've been doing or collages like Christine's been doing, <laughs> you can use all these pieces. You don't have to try and use everything up on this. You can save these pieces and use them for something else. Susie Q, she's got all sorts of things on there. Lizzie Brewer, have a look at what Lizzie Brewer's doing. Scrapping Lizzie, amazing. Um, yeah, oh, I've just I've found some amazing people just recently. I really feel like I've found my tribe. If I think of anyone else, I'll put them in the I'll I'll link them in the description box. There's so many amazing slow stitches out there. Okay, so this is going to be the, the the sort of hanging loop. That's going to go there. Um, so yeah, I'll just do a combination of probably the rick rack I'll do with a running stitches. This one I might actually. Um, I don't know if I've got any examples there. I don't think I have. I'll attach the trim by stitching right across the whole thing. I think it's the thing I did a lot on the on the scrappy squares, right across the whole thing. This one I might just do a, um, a little blanket stitch along the edge, each edge of the trim. So I'll attach them in different ways, and then um, I'll do some stitching along this seam as well. Um, so I'm going to attach them on. And do some other bits of uh, decorative stitching on here, and then I'll come back to you with the with the next stage. I don't I, I don't want this to be um, so. I think if I try and show you all the different decorative stitches, which you probably already know anyway, if you're looking at this, um, it'll just get too long. So I'm just showing you how it basically assembles together, and then leave it to your imagination to do to do whatever you like with this pack. I, I really hope other people like it, like the idea as much as I do, because I just can't wait to see what other people will, will do with it. I think it's really, I think it's really fun. Oh look, there's another bit I missed. Oh, what? You can't put it all on. You can't put it all on. I could, put, could fit a bit in there. <laughs> I'll see what it looks like as I'm going along. Okay, next I'll come back to you. These will all be attached. I've been about an hour and a half, I guess. I don't know really, because I've been sitting watching some video, <laughs> some videos on YouTube while I did it. But I'm all done with this piece now. Well, um, I could still add to it. Um, there's more I could do. I could keep going, definitely. I've still got more trims left. I've got the sequins and beads left and I've got more thread. Um, but I think that's that's enough for me for now um, and I've trimmed it again where the trim where the the trimmings were, were overhanging just to tidy it up and now the idea is going to be that I'll put it right sides together with the the fabric that will become the back of the heart um, but at this point where's my little um here it is so this is the piece the shorter piece of ribbon that's going to become the the loop to attach to the book ring. Now which side did I want this on? I want this over here. So with the loop I'm going to put it like this so that when it's all stitched together and turned inside out it will come out that way. So at the moment it's got to go inwards like that and this is where the pins do come in handy. Or I could use one of these little clips as well if you've got clips they might be easier actually. Right, I shall be leaving a little opening here, just a small opening, and um, for putting the stuffing in in a minute. But first, I need to put my cord that I'm going to have uh, threaded through the needle threader has got to come, has got going at this point as well, and that, I want that to come out of the point. So let's get the cord done. So in the kit, I keep saying in the kit. If you're watching this and you know you, you don't you, you don't want to get a kit, you haven't got to get a kit. You could easily put this together with scraps of fabric you've you've already got. Um, you're very welcome to follow along anyway. You don't have to buy one of the kits. But if you want some uh, nice coordinating pieces of fabric that've been all picked out, ready for you, then. Or if you want to give it to a friend who might not have all that, all the bits and pieces they need to get into slow stitching then I think this would be a really nice little starter project and it's something that you would then carry on using. This is probably way longer than I need so I've probably got about a metre there of each colour, three different colours and I'm just going to thread them first through the hole in the um, needle threader and then I'm going to move it along to halfway so that's just don't have to be too precise because this is way longer than you need anyway. So I've got it to about halfway and then I'm going to use a bit of tape just to secure it down to my work surface. 
um, or you could use something like one of these clips or a bulldog clip or something just to clip it onto something else something that just something that will hold it still uh, while you work on it it's just occurred to me it might be quite fun to thread a bead on at this point as well <laughs> I don't know maybe a bead would get in the way of the the threading function I don't know right so now I'm going to split these into three okay so I'm just going to plait these together I think probably most people watching this will already know how to plait <laughs> I want it to be fairly close up to the hole but loose enough to allow a little bit of movement that's as long as I want mine you can make it as long as you like I wouldn't make it too short because you don't want the heart bit getting in your way when you're trying to use the threader so I think that's quite long enough for my purposes so when I'm done I'm just going to um, tie a knot to just um, secure everything and then cut it off there and I guess if you did this bit first before you started stitching you could use the leftover pieces to stitch with as well um, or you could uh, bundle them up um, and couch, couch them down um, you, could all, you know, could definitely use these pieces um, so that's all ready to go in here I might with the um, sequence of beads what I might do <laughs> is I'm going to put it all together now because I need to get this done but I might after it's together ideally you'd probably do it before it's together, <laughs> before it goes together I might just um, dot some sequins around where some of these are and do the same with the, with the little green beads I think that'd be quite fun as well I'll see I'll see how I feel I'm going to have the, I need to make sure that the knot is outside. I don't want the knot being in here. The knot's got to go outside like that, but all of this needs to go inside because eventually that will be outside, <laughs> if that makes sense. So there we go. I want to just catch that there so it's on the point. Clips probably are easier to use here. So I'm going to stitch, I'm going to start here ish. Let's put a pin in there and stitch all the way around there, all the way around there, all the way to there, and just leave about there. That big of an opening it doesn't need to be too big. Because the less the, <laughs> the less of an opening I leave, the less I've got to overstitch it closed afterwards. So I'm going to work around and do that now and then I'll come back to you. Right, I've finished stitching around, just left my little opening there. Um, I did a back stitch this time, I think it needs to be a back stitch rather than the running stitch. I might get away with a running stitch but it didn't take me very long anyway, <laughs> five minutes to do that. So now before I turn it the right way out I just need to do a bit of clipping. So I'm going to, it's probably easier to look, do it on this side, I'm going to just clip where this, uh, where the kind of V of the heart is go as near as I dare to, to the stitching but not into the stitching and then I'm just going to clip around the curves as well so wherever there's a curve if I don't do that it'll be all puckered when I turn it the right way out so I don't need to do that but just about here where the curve starts around to there um, and uh, I'm going to clip little V's out um, so I always think if it's a an outward curve like that I cut V's if it's an inward curve I just cut slits so that when it's turned the right way out it will sit nicely like, like I say if you know you, you don't have to buy one of the kits I'm putting together you could easily put this together with them um, bits and pieces you've already got for sure and do you know um, if you do get uh, one of these kits there's nothing to stop you adding other bits and pieces to it it strikes me that um, it might be a nice way to use a couple of pretty buttons would be would be good on there or um, you could um, you could put little charms onto the onto the plaid cord if you were making it up to give to someone sort of already made up as a present you know you could personalize it for them by embroidering their name on or, or just an initial you know 
so yeah you can see you can see what I've done there and then last of all I'm just going to cut across here and then so it'll come to a nice point I'm just shaving that down a little bit as well and these all will go in my oats jar <laughs> now I've done that I'm, I'm leaving my needle threaded because I'm lazy <laughs> and um, and I'm just going to turn it all right way out now and we're nearly there Just check on that before I sew it up, just to make sure I've got any any issues. I need to put my right. yeah. I think I'm quite fancy doing you know maybe a blanket stitch or just a chunky over stitch. I've got, I've got plenty of thread left, um, or I could even use these. That might be a fun way to use those as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll have a little think about that. But I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna show you how how to finish this off for now, and then um, if I want to do any titivating, I can do it later. I'm just gonna put this needle inside and then up through there, so it's all ready to overstitch in a minute. Um, yeah, another fun idea would be to pop some lavender or um, some of those little uh, fragrance beads you can get to go in the washing machine. Something like that, something that's nice and fragrant um, you could put inside here at this point. Especially a nice idea if you were making it as a gift for someone. Okay, just tuck it into all the corners and points. And this would be a good use for your for your orts actually <laughs> if you're doing I mean you'll, you'll get the stuffing in the kit but if you're doing one with your with your end scraps and things and you've been saving your orts this would be a good way to use them it's probably a little bit more than I need there really I want it quite nice and firm but I'd, I don't want it kind of bursting at the seams all I need to do is a little over stitch to close it fold those edges over and hold it together I could use a clip if I wanted but I don't think I need to um, so yeah, I could just do a straightforward overstitch, or what would probably be neater is to do a little, is it called a, a ladder stitch? We go in, so I'm trying to hold it out now so you can see, and it's really difficult because I'm at arm's length here. You go just inside the fabric like that on one side, and then go across and inside the fabric on the other side. So it's kind of almost uh, invisible. It's probably a neater finish than just doing an overstitch. As I say, you could go nuts and do a lot more slow stitching on this if you wanted to. I really enjoyed just doing the kind of, uh, not spirals, kind of just circular straight, circular straight stitching, <laughs> straight stitching in circles on there. I really enjoyed just doing that. And you could definitely do more of that. You could add some of the yeah sequins and beads on the back is what I might do. And I'm sure you could probably do a neater job than I'm doing here because I'm it's in a bit of a hurry. It's late at night now, and I'm trying to do this at arm's length. <laughs> so as so you can see it on the camera. I'm going to bring the thread out there. Put on it a little bit snip it and it just disappears back inside so there we go <laughs> oh, I like that one that's bright and colorful I love this really bold rick rack or what Tom was calling what was he calling it a wiggly line that wiggly line stuff I think he was calling it <laughs> so now all that remains to do is put my little book clip on you just you just pull it open like that I'm sure you've all seen book rings and I can put my um, little thread holders on there as well um, 
Let's put this pair of scissors on, scissors on this time. This is one of my pretty sewing scissors, but just to show you. Clip that together again. There we go. How cute is that? <laughs> it's, got all the, it's got all the leftovers out of the way. As you can see, there are lots of leftovers. Oh, and of course, um, the pins are in the kit as well, so let's just pop them in. Okay, so let's just have, um, let's have a bit of a close-up at this now. So here we go. You can see all the little bits of stitching I've done there. are stitched into the pattern printed on the fabric. I've done some fly stitching, some straight stitching, some couching, some chain stitch, some whipped running stitch, some just over stitch. Um, I've stitched into the trims quite a bit. Uh, yeah. I'm really pleased with that, I think it's my favourite one so far. And I do quite like the idea of adding some sequins and things on the back, seeing as I have got them there. <laughs> okay. That is me done. Um, thank you very much for joining me. Please do let me know what you what you think of that. Um, by the time this film goes up, they will be in the Etsy shop, so I'll put a link to the Etsy shop um, in the description box below. Um, but yeah, you know, if if you don't have to buy one of the kits, just uh, join in, use your own, use your own um, scraps that you've already got. It's a great way to use up your scraps, and I think it'd be a really useful little thing to have, and a really nice idea as a, as a present for for a friend who's either already into slow stitching or you you'd like to tempt them into slow stitching. <laughs> yeah so yeah let me let me know what you think and um if you do if you make your own please do tag me share them on the you can uh share them in our discord group or in the facebook group i will leave my link tree below so you can find your way to those places if you would like to or if you tag you post them on instagram or, or, or wherever please do tag me so i can see because that'd be really exciting anyway i need to go now <laughs> it's really late <laughs> thank you so much for joining me and i'll see you again really soon